<laughs> uh, that's Amy running after Mum. She kept stopping and driving off, stopping and driving off, <laughs> stopping and driving off. That's a joke that never grows old. Okay, regarding the EVSE or the brick charger, trickle charger for Mike's, which obviously he didn't get because he had the 6.6. .6. Cal from the director's office has emailed me, actually rung me, sorry, saying that um, they're going to replace it. Um, not replace it, or send me, send me one, they've never had one. So I've given Mike mine anyway because he needs that and he's had that now, he's been using that for the last couple of weeks. Um, and I'm going to when a new one comes I'm going to have it um, but it's going to be a long time apparently it's going to take quite a while to get to me because I haven't got any and I've been he hearing rumours about the servicing side of it if, you know, if you're know, if you involved in a crash or something in this and the replacement parts just seem to take weeks or months to come through it's like they've got no spare parts sat on the shelf at all for them um, I suppose that's an example of that so that's coming down they sorted that out I've heard nothing about car wings or the service manual yet the sticker that should be in the front of it, if you remember, um, from a previous episode. So, don't know what's going on with that. I'll leave that another couple of months and then chase it again and ask them what knows going on with it. I'd say that's very good that they're going to send one down. And um, that's not Nissan doing that. That's the people that sold me the car. They're going to foot the bill for a replacement EVSE. Now, oh, this isn't a Leaf, is it? No. This is a VW Golf, brand new one, and uh, nothing to do with me. Apart from the fact it's a courtesy car, it's got very, very nice sort of a titanium-ish finish to it. But check out that! Look at the pixelation on that. How old school is it? Now that really makes me appreciate the Leaf one. I mean, it's, it's head and shoulders above this mid-range, brand new Golf. <laughs> I don't know. People are getting away with it. It's such poor quality screens and software on the on the cars. It's weird. But there you go. It is what it is. And the Leaf one looks nicer than that, even though the Leaf itself isn't a particularly brilliant one. It's about 10 years behind its time. But this just looks rubbish. <laughs> Don't say really. <laughs> like I wouldn't be happy. Going from the Leaf to these cars, you do notice a difference. I mean, I goodness knows what it'd be like if you went from a Tesla to another car. <laughs> it'd be like getting, it would be like getting into a cart. Um, so, yeah, you'd think they'd do a lot better. Just really highlighting the fact that why, why, why do car manufacturers get away with putting in inadequate systems? They're nowhere near up to date. The pixelation on this is terrible. And I'm probably about a meter away from it. Goodness knows what it's like up real close. Am I going in that car off out this evening? No, of course not. I'm going in that one. Miles better than this brand new plate, two litre TDI Blue Motion Golf. Much nicer car to drive. So move everything back across to that. Start using that one again. Drop this one off tomorrow morning and pick up Amy's car. And I noticed that these aren't wearing very well at all. Unfortunately, they're all scratched up, which is a bit annoying. This one's hardly used at all, but it's still got scratches on it. And that one, the following one, also scratched up. It's a little bit annoying. Bye. Okie dokie. Um, I want to turn off the schedule, which as you know, I've said in the previous episode, I'm not actually on Economy 7. So having a schedule is completely pointless. I may as well just charge it as soon as I plug it in. Because it's no cheaper. Um, the weird thing is that I've done this once already. If I turn it off and say save. Oh taken. Okay to confirm. Let's have a little look whether this works. Let's go back here, charge timer. It's all off. Right, so what should happen now is uh, turn off 
the car um, I shouldn't have to press I shouldn't have to press that one there um, it should just do it so I shall try that let's turn this off you got 20 percent 18 miles right so there's no lights on the dash uh, bear with me because I've got to take a few things out of the car. That's done. Right. Okay. Let's lock the vehicle. <laughs> try this out then. Let's see what happens. Now put that in there. And it is charging. That's good then. Charging straight away. Good. That solved that problem. Schedule cancelled for the first time since it was set months ago. Quick one. Um, just to add someone called Ryan Noble um, write a comment up, which is quite an interesting thing, which I've discussed before with people but never mentioned it in a video. So it might be useful to mention it, which is with the home charging units you get fitted. You can obviously have the one like I've got, which is 16 amp, fitted, um, or you can go for the 30 amp for the 6.6 .6 kilowatt Nissans, or you can upgrade if you think you might need it in the future for a more capable car, shall we say, um, with that fitted. Um, but it has its downsides if you go for the upgraded version. If you're running solar panels, you're going to consume more off the grid than you are off your solar. So that's just something to keep in mind. You, I mean, I've had people contact me saying they, they prefer to trickle charge it because if their car is sat at home and they want to use the solar for the eight hours of the day, um, it's the best way for them to do it. So that's what they do. Um, they trickle charge it up. It takes longer but then they don't tend to use as much off the grid. More can come off the solar because it draws so much, of course. So rather than taking four hours um, to charge on a 30 amp, if it was empty, um, about taking like 60%, 70% off of the grid as opposed to the solar, um, they trickle charge it. So it's worth keeping in mind, depending on your layer, if you've got solar panels at home, and you've got a 6.6 .6 and you fit a 30 amp, then you're going to be utilizing the grid more than you are the solar because there's no way it can pump out enough power. Unless, of course, you've got a huge array, which is very unlikely, to be fair. Um, you might have a 6 kilowatt, I suppose. Um, but even then, still worth considering the situations where it doesn't even matter. Like, I haven't even got solar, so it doesn't matter to me. If I had a 6.6, .6, I would have got a 30 amp fitted. Mike's getting a 30 amp fit to his. He hasn't got solar on his house. If he did have solar as a 4 kilowatt system, it probably wouldn't be worthwhile necessarily going for it. Of course, even then, if you're not actually worried about that at all, then I would always recommend going for the 30 amp because you're going to charge in four hours from flat, whereas me, it would take eight hours. So, yeah, it's just it's just worth mentioning, basically, and worth thinking about as a... You know, it's a possible thing why you might not want to go for the upgraded version. I would still go for it, just from the fact that I can get home, plug it in for an hour, and I've got 25 miles back on the car, as opposed to 12. So, um, yeah, just thought I'd mention that as it came up. Thank you very much for the comments, because it was brought it to my attention that it's probably worth actually discussing it in a video. Bye. Right, it is a beautiful day. We are going to try something, because someone brought this up on the forum. Uh, hopefully the window's down, you'll be able to hear it. This is, in inverted commas, launch control. Now, there's the option of putting your left foot on the brake, left foot on the brake, and then slamming the throttle down. Can you hear that squeaking noise? And off we go. There's that option, which you can't really tell what's going on. I don't know if you can hear it. So the noise it makes is that horrible noise when you put your foot on the brake. Put your foot on the brake. It's because it's pushing. I can feel the car rocking against the... Uh, it rocks against the brake. So the motor definitely does try and drive when your foot's on the brake and you press the throttle. The other option is to put it into neutral, slam your foot down, and then 
put it to deep. Whoa, and that's real jolty, isn't it? What do you think? Yeah. That was definitely the fastest way of doing it. But, um, mm, I wouldn't recommend doing it because it makes quite a horrible clunk as it goes from neutral to drive. But you don't need to put your foot on the brake to go from neutral to drive. Hence the reason it suddenly slams into drive and off you go with a full throttle. But if you put your foot on the brake and slam the throttle down and then release the brake, it, um, it's been pushing against the brake the whole time. So I wouldn't recommend that either. But that was just a little test to try it out, see how we got on. Yeah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, I am trying to see how long I can go without charging up on my regular journey. So today is Tuesday. Yesterday I did not charge. I set off in, my, in the morning to work um, at 100%. I'm now going to work on a Tuesday morning and it's at 81%. I've dropped the kids off at school and I will try and not charge up if I can help it too much. Well, I won't charge up at all, in fact. Um, probably until Thursday. I'll try and make it last a Thursday when I get to my parents' house. Um, I've got to go to Gloucester on a Thursday anyway. After that, I think. So it may just depend. But anyway, we'll just see what percentage I get down to. I'll probably call it quits at 20%. Um, so if I get at 20%, whatever day that is, I will let you guys know. Um, it's just ready to see whether I can do my general routine. It's not a huge amount of miles. I will put the mileage, the estimated approximate mileage, um, at the bottom of the screen here. Um, so that's what I do during the week. Um, but there we go. Just so there's something else to do, really. Instead of plugging it in every single night, charging it sometimes from 85%, plug it in just to charge it that little bit, I shall leave it up to 20%, down to 20%. Bye! 9,000 miles. 9,000 miles. I had to stop the car to do film that. I didn't have the camera on. I only just noticed. Pure luck, I noticed. So there we are, 9,000 miles. Today is the 15th of... It's the 15th and 16th of July, something like that. And I got this on the 24th of January 2014. So soon be six months in, not quite. But brilliant. Enjoyed every single mile of it. And look at this beautiful weather. Uh, I am actually um, six months into it. <laughs> Almost. A few days off. Um, and as you just noticed, I did 9,000 miles. My lease, if you remember my previous episodes, is a 10,000 miles per year lease. <laughs> Woo! But if I double it, it costs me about 350 quid, basically, um, in overages, charges. So it's not that much, obviously per year. So it could amount to quite a lot over the four year lease. Um, but I'm trying to dial it down as much as I can. It's such a nice car to drive, so easy to drive, and it's so easy to do extra journeys that you wouldn't usually do, just for the fact that it costs you so little. Um, coupled with the fact it's nice to drive. So you tend to want to get in it and drive it places. Um, but I'm trying to dial that down a little bit just to try and protect myself from a massive bill at the end, uh, which in comparison to a lot of contracts is pretty minimal anyway. I mean, the dad's key, I think it's on six or seven P a mile for any overages. Now a word on that, thinking about that, his Kia, he was way over his mileage. Since they've got their Nissan Leaf, it's way under, it's hardly using it. You might use it once or twice a week at the most. Um, they're car sharing basically, based on a graph that he had made up, which I will show on the screen now. As you can see in this graph, um, it's like a decision chart, not a graph, sorry, that's probably the wrong term. So a decision chart on who should have the leaf. And you follow these reasons through, it's mad, isn't it? He is an accountant, by the way, so this is why you get things like this. <laughs> this you follow this through and that's, your decision is based on what this chart says or whether or not you should be taking the Nissan Leaf. So there you go. That's how much. Don't, you know, we're not all nerds, electric car drivers, but almost all of us are. Um, there you go. So his, he's actually brought down his mileage hugely um, and he'll be way under what he's leased his car for. Um, so there's no risk of him going over. Of course, I can't car share. I mean, if I had another car, my, my mileage would have gone down as well, but I haven't, so yeah. So if you're in a position where you've got a lease and you then get a leaf, 
um, you may find that you well, you will find if you especially if you use the same decision chart that he's using there that he made up um, you'll find that the mileage just drops off your combustion engine and you end up pretty much 95% of the time using the leaf which just backs up the statistics that electric car manufacturers like to throw at you which is this will be good for 99% of your journeys or something like that and they're always saying that they're saying you know more or less all of the nation drives around in short journeys which this leaf even though its range is only 85 in winter to 100 in summer that is well within its capabilities of almost every single person that drives um, including round trips so yeah I mean with them especially that's that's com almost completely true I mean you're using it hardly at all and that percentage split is, is pretty much what they say um, I haven't been able to test that theory because obviously I haven't got another car to jump into so my usage is a hundred percent but there we go well, it is Wednesday evening, 1923, and um, we're at that 10%. I said I was going to stop at 20, but I couldn't really have a chance. So I haven't charged since Sunday afternoon, and it is now Wednesday afternoon, and there's the miles I'm at so far. So I'm going to go in, put on charge now, for a little bit. Bye. Well, that is some rain. It's crazy. Yeah. It's flooding down there. We've had storms on and off. Distance over there is just completely hammering it down. Bit of lightning there. I think it's time for go for a nice Ooh, a bit of thunder. I think it's time for go for a nice bit of a drive. In the electric car. Mmm, lovely. Lovely weather. It's been like this now. Thunder and lightning for the last day. Real uh, First day of the summer holidays <laughs> for the kids. Oh dear. Great, isn't it? It's on. Are you ready? Go for it, lean forward, Mike. No. All right, we can whip around, we can start very quickly and make Jeff a cup of coffee. <laughs> then we can come back. And... <laughs> so, it could be a standard issue for everyone. <laughs> They're good, aren't they? <laughs> 